guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to read a wiring diagram. All right, so this is an HVAC wiring diagram of a forced air gas furnace. Okay, um, I know you guys have been asking a lot of questions lately and um, trying to get to them as I can. So, one of the questions came in is how do you read a wiring diagram? All right, so you may be asked by your boss to go and fix something that you've never seen before. Okay, so you you know, they say, hey, you know, I've got faith in you. Go ahead and fix this, you know, <laughs> um, but you've never seen it. So you don't know how it operates. So what you're looking at is you're looking at the wiring diagram. On this side, you see the connection diagram. On this side, you see the schematic diagram. So the connection diagram on this side is used to just basically find the components. OK, and then and then also trace the wires. All right. Because it tells you what colors the wires are. On the schematic diagram over here, it does not tell you what the color of the wires are, but this is more or less telling you the actual function of what's happening. All right, it starts at the top left right here at L1 and L2, L1 being hot, L2 being common neutral. All right, this, this is a 120 volt or 115 volt uh, furnace. Okay, it says schematic diagram, natural gas, and propane. So the connection diagram is going to help you locate components okay so say you want to find the inducer motor okay you look through the wiring diagram legend located at the bottom down here and you look for the inducer motor all right so idm induced draft motor psc meaning permanent split capacitor so you know that this one has a capacitor on it so you know, say if there's a problem with it, you can test the capacitor. Maybe that's what the problem is. But it says IDM right there. Okay, so we can find IDM on this uh, board right here. And I see it right here, IDM. So then it's it's showing you the where the voltage would be coming in. You have a black, a ground, and a white wire. Okay, this is a, a green-yellow wire for the ground. So if you find these wires, you find what looks like to be the inducer motor. You can see that it also says cap two right there. All right, cap meaning usually that's capacitor, right? So that is cap capacitor right there. Okay. So that's something where, where how you find a component. Okay. Let's just look at something a little bit more difficult to find that we'll go ahead and find it in the furnace itself. All right. So let's find the... Um, High temperature limit switch and the flame rollout sensor. Okay, those are normally in series. So what we want to find is limit switch. All right, so there is LS down here. Limit switch. It says auto reset, SPST, and C. Okay, so it's telling us that this is an automatic reset. So if the temperature were to rise it will open. It's normally closed contacts. Okay, it, it always tells you what the contacts look like when it, the system is not powered. All right, so this is normally closed when not powered, all right? And obviously as this, the only thing that's gonna open this is a uh, temperature, a high temperature, and then it will auto reset to close again after opening. All right, now let's look at the connection diagram and find it, all right? And right here we have LS, okay, limit switch. And it shows you a picture of this as a temperature open on rise okay so it's pushing upwards right there all right and the connections are closed okay now right here right next to it remember we said they're always in series whether you have multiple flame rollout sensors or multiple limit uh, temperature limit switches all right the frs okay frs right here okay flame rollout switch it says manual reset, okay, and that one's normally closed. All right, so you actually have to reset that manually. That will not automatically reset, and for good reason, because if your if your flame rod uh, sensor ever popped, uh, that could mean that there's a cracked heat exchanger and the homeowner's in danger of carbon monoxide poisoning. So, yeah, don't um, don't just keep resetting that. All right, there's another issue at hand right there. It could and it, and it could be the flame rod switch itself, okay. But more likely, um, it's it could be that the flame is literally rolling out and the blower motor turns on. Um, but anyway, so we see we have red wires right here, okay? And that would be a dangerous situation if the flame rot sensor was 
was tripping and you really need to verify and look at to see if the flame is 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 coming back out the uh, near the burner heads there um, when the blower motor turns on but uh, that is a very uh, um, important thing to check right there all right so anyway we have R red okay coming this way red coming through and finding its way back to the control board PCB printed circuit board and PCB down here right here PCB printed circuit board all right so it's showing that it's on the circuit board and you have a um, a plug right here it looks like from 1 to 11 okay so it's the red wires coming off of the plug you can trace it from the control board through the sensors and then back to the control board now those limit switches if they were to trip it's not going to allow the furnace to turn on that sequence of operation to get the heat on all right so you need to check that to see if you were um, having any issue with that now any of these um, limit switches normally on most furnaces but not all most furnaces are 24 volts so what you can do is you could put a terminal or you could put a multimeter probe on the common right here is the thermostat connection uh, location right here okay so you see you have G for fan C for common W for heat Y for cooling and R for power so what you could do is you could put one probe on the common right here and then you can put the other probe on the limit switch okay so you can put it on this side then we can follow it through to this side okay then we can follow it to right over to here on this switch and follow it right over to here all right and then we could also follow all the way back to the control board right here so that's what we're going to do now okay um, we're going to go ahead and go over to the furnace and check that out okay now once again I just want to give you just an overview right here on the schematic diagram it's just showing you basically from the entrance right here where you have L1, the power wire coming in. It goes through ILK. ILK coming down here is the blower access panel interlock switch. And it says it's normally open, okay, unless you close the door and close it. That will allow voltage coming through. And then it is coming all the way over to here. It's stopping at the... Uh, BLWR, so that's a blower blower relay. Okay, so let's, let's look for that. BLR says blower motor relay normally open, so that the control board would have to close that in order to power the blower motor. Likewise, IDR. Okay, let's find IDR. IDR induced draft motor relay says normally open. Okay, so that one as well is you you would have to have the control board closing the relay in order to uh, power the inducer motor all right but you do see it has direct power to uh, the transformer okay it comes through the transformer and then it comes out the transformer to the common which is the l2 common neutral bar right here all right see all these connections are right here so basically it's just showing that you the voltage path and then it comes through the transformer has 24 volts and it comes through it goes into uh, sec one, okay, and it goes through this right here, which is the fuse, okay. There's a note, it says number six right here, replace only with the three amp fuse, not a five amp on this particular one, just due to um, the, the transformer size, all right. FU1, okay, if we look at that over here, FU1 is a fuse three amp automotive blade type factory installed, okay. Then it goes through there, and then it comes comes to your. Let's see here. Remember, we had that that uh, plug end that was going through numbers one through eleven. That's what this is right here. Okay, so it's powering from here, coming over to the CPU. It's powering the CPU. It's going through the flame roller and the LS one, and that's why it's so important because it's it's powering it directly, basically from the 24 volts. Okay, and it's coming back on the eight. Okay, that is what's going to give your R power. Okay, so if you see, it comes from 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 the transformer through the fuse, through the flame rod switch and the limit switch, and then it comes to the R terminal. So you won't be able to power anything on your control board if these are broken. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the furnace itself.
All right, so this is how we would test out that flame rollout sensor. We found via the connection diagram that we were looking at um, that the flame rollout sensor and the high temperature limit switch both have red wires and they're in series. The other set of red wires is right here and it leads back to the limit switch, the high temperature limit switch back behind this gas valve back here. Okay. As well, over on the control board right here, I'll show you that, but there's a, uh, there's a plug right here and there's 11 ports on it and two of them are red, right? And they're the same numbers it says on the um, diagram right there. All right, so how we would check this if we just came up to this site and we wanted to check it, um, there's two ways to check it. One is with voltage. So I can put my one probe on C, okay? 24 volts C, common, and we're gonna check one side, all right? and we read 28 volts. So anything between say 24 and 28 and a half volts, that would be correct. 20, 24 volts is what we call that. All right, now let's check the other side, okay? The other side of that switch and we see 28 volts. So that means that the 28 volts, the hot wire basically sent off the control boards going through this flame rollout switch, okay? And then going to the next switch. So um, there's no need to reset it. There's no need to um, check that. That is now checked. Everything is good. Okay. With that sensor. I'll show you the other way to check that. All right. What we do is we would go ahead and disconnect the power and we would take one of our spade terminals off. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. All right. We, if we test at the control board here at common and R, we no longer have 24 volts. On this furnace, this furnace is actually supposed to actually run the blower motor for four minutes and then enter into a, a lockout, all right? So that means that we do not have voltage from common to R here because this sensor is not letting the voltage through. The control board sees that and is running the blower motor just to cool things down in case there's a problem. It wants to cool the, blower, uh, cool, cool the heat exchanger all down. All right, um, but say we wanted to test that sensor out up top here. We turn the power off. We take our other spade terminal connector off. We would take our multimeter to resistance and then we would check across the spade terminals. And we read 0.3 ohms of resistance. So it should be between say zero, it should be right around zero. It, just, it may have to do with um, your connection right there. Okay, now we read 0 0.3, 0 0.4 ohms of resistance. Okay, somewhere it's around zero to 0 0.5 ohms, something like that. Uh, but that, like I said, that that may just have to be with how hard you're pushing with your probes. You can have it on continuity, all right, and it would it would be. I normally have it on resistance though. All right. Um, it does basically the same thing. All right, so that sensor is good. So if it beeps on continuity, then you know the sensor is good. If you read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance or something very close to that, that would be like this right here. You know the connection is good. All right, so now we're going to go ahead over and see if we can get you a line of sight on this high temperature limit switch back here. All right, so I got you a little line of sight on this high temperature limit switch back here. Okay. And I got my multimeter back here, just so you can see it. It's set on voltage right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my one probe on the C terminal, all right, at the control board. And then the other one is going to be on the actual sensor. So here we go. So you got the common right here, and we're gonna come into this sensor right here and see if we can read somewhere right around 24 volts. All right, so you see we got 28.05. All right, now let's check the other side of the sensor. All right, and you see we have 28 volts. So that means that that sensor is closed and everything is okay. All right. Once again, if you wanted to turn the power off, you could take a resistance value reading. You could turn it to the what looks like the upside down horseshoe. Turn it to a resistance value reading and check that sensor as well. Okay, now that we're set on resistance, we'll go ahead and check our sensor. And 
So you see that you have 0 0.2 ohms of resistance, somewhere right around there. So 0 0.0 to 0 0.5 or so, that just has to be with, uh, that just has to do with how tight your connections are with your uh, probes right there. All right, so that sensor is good. All right, so now let's go ahead and check for voltage at the control beam. All right, so you remember that whole mess of trying to test each each temperature sensor individually. Um, if you want to test the resistance value, you got to turn the power off, take the terminals off, read the resistance, try to get them back on. And in the case of the one high temperature limit switch, it was behind the gas valve. So if we look at the connection diagram, we're going to be able to tell where that PL1, where the two red wires are coming off of the control board at, right there and right there. So by using your wiring diagram, you can figure out how to do how to test, say in this case, high temperature limit switch and hot, uh, flame rollout switch sensors very quickly. All right. So what we can do is we can put one probe on the common and we can put one probe right on the red. And right there, you see we have. 28 volts. Okay. Now let's check the other red wire right here, and right there we have 28 volts. So that proves that all of our sensors right there are, are high temperature limit sensors, and and um, you know your flame rollout sensors. Say you have four of them, you know you can quickly test them right there that way. All right. The other thing is you wouldn't even have 24 volts coming from common to R. Okay. Because if one of those sensors was off, then you would have no voltage from common to R with the power power there. And I'll show you that real quickly here. Right, I'll just pull one of these off. We'll turn this back on. And then we'll test from common to R. And right there, we do not have 24 volts. Okay. went ahead and, and plugged the sensor back in. But that just goes to show you if you if you learn how to read those wiring diagrams very well, um, you can figure out how something works. You can figure out shortcuts to um, testing everything and troubleshooting. It just has, has to do with how many wiring diagrams and how much time you spend looking at them and stuff. So if you look at wiring diagrams and you're off time and you kind of follow the voltage, you can start to understand how a system works. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.